So this is Nijmegen in the Netherlands, and this is Europe's brand new expo. This is only the second one they've had here in Nijmegen, but this place is huge, and there are so many reptiles and amphibians that you can really only see here in Europe. So in this video, I'm gonna take you guys around the Nijmegen Reptile Expo and show you some amazing reptiles and amphibians that can be found here. But because this isn't an NARBC Expo, I'm not gonna do the Rattle On Awards. I'm just gonna show you guys what a European Expo is really like. I'm Dave Kaufman, and these are my reptile adventures. So the first thing you'll notice when you come to a European Reptile Expo like this is the displays. It's actually illegal in a lot of parts of Europe to have acrylic displays like we have in the United States and Canada and elsewhere in the world. And therefore, people here get really creative with their displays. All right, so on this table, we've got a ton of inverts, but here's something you will never see in North America. These are African giant land snails. Look at those guys. That guy's as big as my hand. Only 25 euros. We've got tarantulas, scorpions, and we've got a pharaoh. All right over there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, you know what the coolest thing that I've seen here so far? Us. Well, uh, besides you guys, <laughs> look at this. We've got a whole table of chairs for sale. Yeah, Very unique. and nobody's here, so you can just basically walk away with these chairs. Do you guys need chairs? <laughs> so not only are there some amazing reptiles that really can't be seen outside of Europe, there are also some inverts here that you will never see in North America because of import laws, including this giant katydid from Papua New Guinea. Look at the size of this thing. This I'm kind of totally geeking out about. You know, it's one thing to come to a reptile expo and see tons of really cool reptiles, but when you see something this unique and something that I've never really seen, let alone held before, this is such a cool thing. Look at this, and look at the leaf mimic on that. And then they also have this amazing orchid mantis. Look at this guy, he's very jumpy. He's about to jump off my hand. But man, you know, I'll tell you, if mantises had a longer life expectancy, these would be some of the most popular pet inverts that you can have. So this is a female, these come from Malaysia, but there is a lot of sexual dimorphism between males and females. So this is the female, and this is the male. Much smaller, not as pretty, doesn't really have the wow factor that the females do, but man, these are so unbelievably cool. All right, so this is Mario's. You have like some incredible inverts here. I mean, look at this. Those are just incredible. So where are you from? Germany. Germany, okay. And in Germany, we all know that the reptiles are really huge in Germany. How are the inverts the hobby doing in Germany? It's the same, I would say. Yeah. And it's increasing since, I would say like 10 years. So I, I started like 10 years ago and there was just a small community breeding praying mantis especially because as you see I'm mainly doing praying mantis yeah. and it's increasing every year because it's switching from like the regular pets like dogs and cats sure. more to exotic ones to snakes and especially because it's cheaper and doesn't take so much time so praying mantis, stick insects, fast meats, caddy dits is getting more and more attention. So the invert hobby is really growing in Germany and all through Europe. That's good to see. Awesome, well thank you so much. These are amazing. So 
naturally, when you come to an expo here in Europe, you're going to see a lot of jeans and ball pythons that are new to us in the United States and Canada. And there is one particular gene that caught my eye called the Rico gene. This is a brand new gene that popped up, but it's not just that this gene is visually appealing, there's something else going on with its genetics. So here at Ingle Reptiles, this is Uber, and you have discovered a new gene in ball pythons called the Rico gene. And this is a very interesting gene. There's a lot of new genes out there that kind of look very similar to other genes. Mm -hmm. This one's actually really different. So tell us all about the Rico gene. Yeah, first of all, thank you very much that I can introduce our new gene. We called it Rico. Uh, visibly, this gene is reducing the red color in ball pythons and change the, uh, the, the yellow color into a oli olive color. Into yeah. an olive color, okay. Olive color. But uh, the genetic of this gene is absolutely incredible. This gene uh, is codominant and recessive in one snake. Codom yes. and recessive in one snake. Yeah, you can believe it or not, but right? it is so. For example, if you breed an Rico to a normal ball python, you will get in the first clutch, in the first generation, Ricos, but only males. So like the banana, sort yeah, of, kind of? In this direction, yes. But on the other side, uh, all the females you got in this clutch are recessive for this gene. Yeah. So the males are codom, yeah. the females are recessive. Yeah. All right, so here we have the Rico gene and what it does. So here we have just straight Ultramel. Here is a Rico Ultramel. And you can definitely see the Rico influence and what that does in these two snakes. It really does reduce that yellow pattern mm -hmm. and really turns it into an olive color. All right, so that's what it does to Ultramel. But when you add pastel, which is a color that is naturally yellow, yeah. this is what Rico does to the here. pastel. So this is a pastel GHI. You can see those yellows coming out. You can definitely see that GHI influence in this snake. But then when you add Rico to this pastel, this is what you get. And that really is an olive looking snake. And here in the head uh, area, you see it, it looks similar to an exantic. It sure does. I wonder if this is a kind of a muted exanthic gene that is causing this to happen. Maybe. Here you see exantic clown and this is an Arico. And that's a Rico clown. It's similar but not the same. Wow. And now what line of exanthic is that? Do you know? That is a TAK. Okay, TSK? Yeah. TSK. You know, when I was looking around this expo at all the snakes that are here and you showed me the Rico morph. I wanted to let everybody that's watching this know about this really exciting new morph. Mm -hmm. But not only is it exciting, it's very interesting that the females are het mm -hmm. and the males are codom. That you don't often see in ball python genetics. I never heard it before. Neither have I. <laughs> well, it was great meeting you. Thank you so much. Have a great show. Yeah, thank you very All much. All right, thank you. Danke schön. Bye -bye. That's the extent of my German, sorry. <laughs> <laughs>of incredible genes and ball pythons that you can really only see here in Europe so far. 
Justin Kabelka is here with me, or maybe I'm here with Justin Kabelka, but Justin found one of the most amazing ball pythons here at this expo. Let's go see what he found. Justin, what have you found? This is the best snake at the show so far. I've only been through half of it, but this one probably is the most crazy snake I've seen in a long time. This is a pastel confusion desert ghost, and it just has insanely amazing pattern. The blacks and the yellow just dripping off it. This is, I mean, I knew this was a good combo, but in person, this animal is just amazingly insane. That thing glows in the dark. So with the lighting in here, the way the camera translates this, I'm telling you, that is like a jungle carpet python in a ball yes. python body. Those are rich, deep blacks, just neon yellow yellows. <laughs> I love these little pockets of pattern yeah. in, in the stripe, just give it a little bit of depth. Do it. I'll hold it in the light down here, it might help a little bit. Look at that. Oh, yeah. yeah light does everything. Look at that. Wow. That is amazing. And this one is not for sale? Not for sale. If you were going to sell it, <laughs> how much <laughs> would that be? Maybe with 20,000. 20,000 euros, euros. Which is like 400 million American dollars, right? <laughs> is that the exchange rate nowadays? <laughs> that is just right. amazing. That is cool. All right, good pick, Justin. Rainbow Mealworms is not only a proud sponsor of this channel, they are the premier source for all your reptile food needs. They grow all of their quality insects in-house, and I use them exclusively for all my insect-eating reptiles. So place your order today at rainbowmealworms.net or click the link in the description below. All right, we have Roland over here, the R in Iris Reptiles. Uh, you are working with a lot of amazing genes that we're going to see in an upcoming video that I shot at your place that's coming up soon. But for now, I just want to show off the moray gene. What can I say about it? We, we found it by accident. By accident? By well, accident. of course. Yeah. A lot of genes are discovered by accident. Exactly. So it's this is the base morph. This is the base morph. We were working with the morph from 2017. That's when we discovered it. 17, okay. And uh, so you've proved it out. It's its yeah. own gene. It's recessive. It's recessive. Is it it yeah. is recessive. It's recessive. Yes. That is such an amazing gene. You know, there are so many new genes in ball pythons that have just kind of very subtle variations. But this, you can definitely tell that this is something special. It is, but there is a big possibility that's the same in the monsoon gene, which is originating to come from the U.S. Right, yes, from right. US. All right, so Justin Kabelka has bred the moray to the monsoon yes. to see if they're compatible. And they are. And they are. Yes. They are compatible. Well, even so, this is one of the most incredible genes you guys are working with. But I'll tell you, Iris Reptiles has developed a number of brand new ball python morphs. And a couple of days ago, I was the first to be able to visit Iris's facility here in the Netherlands. And I filmed that video. That video is coming up soon. And we're going to see some of the other ball python morphs that Iris Reptiles is working with. They are one of the premier ball python breeders here in the Netherlands. That video is coming up soon. So like other expos around the world, yes, there are tons and tons of ball python morphs here, which, you know, I'm a ball python guy, I geek out about them, but I also geek out about all the other snake species that you can see at an expo like this, other than ball pythons. And right over here at Future Morphs, he's working with some of the most amazing corn snakes. So we're gonna go over to Future Morphs table and talk to Joshua and see what corn snakes he's working with. If you guys remember my Houghton video from about five years ago, you're gonna remember him and we're gonna see what's up with Joshua right over here. So this is Joshua. Hi guys. You have some of the coolest corn snakes in Europe. You work almost exclusively with corn snakes. Yeah, correct. But you have something really special and that is the mimosa corn. Yeah, correct. Okay, uh, tell us all about the mimosa corn. Well, uh, uh, I don't know everything about it yet. 10 years ago I started with the line, uh, but I didn't really know what's going on. I thought it was red factor. Turned out there was more going on. They have a lot of yellow on the face and in the neck, a lot of frosting on the saddles. Uh, also a lot of pink in them. Yeah. Um, so far, I think it is either dominant or co-dominant. I'm not really sure. Also, line breeding is definitely involved. All right, yeah. let's take a look at this thing. All right, so this is 
the mimosa goes to Sierra, but also with some red factor influences. So it's not the best example, uh, but I also have uh, uh, one that's a year older that is pretty cool as well. So all right. So this one is sort of pure mimosa, no red factor influences. Oh, and look at uh, that. Uh, not as pink, but a lot of yellow. Uh, yeah, it's, it's almost a little orange, brown, pink tones. Uh, beige, I don't know how you would... Yeah, beige. That's, uh, yeah. So uh, he is uh, either an ultra or ultra male. Uh, Ennery, uh, Tessera, Mobley. It's definitely not a, a bad animal, but I have some way more colorful ones at home. So uh, on my website, futuremorphs.com, you can find an article about the Mimosa with pictures of all animals I have and all the history. Always great to see you at these shows when I'm in Europe. Yeah. And next one Definitely. I'm at, I'll see how you're doing then, and we'll do oh. another little segment. And one yeah. of these days, I'll get over to your place and actually film a video. Okay, deal. Awesome. Let's do that. Awesome. Great. So here in Europe, bearded dragons are just about as popular as they are everywhere else in the world. And there's some genes here that other places in the world might not see yet. And there's some genes that other places in the world have seen, but that they're taking to a totally different level. And right over here at Boss Dragons, Derek is working with some incredible bearded dragon morphs. This is Derek Hello. from Boss Dragons. So now you are living in the Netherlands right now. Yes. But you're from Puerto Rico. My family comes from Puerto Rico. I'm fr originally from New York. You're from New York. Yeah. Okay, well, I knew Puerto Rico was in there somewhere. So you came here, you met your wife playing video games, yeah, I understand, it's a movie, yeah. which is awesome. <laughs> uh, that's a really cool story. But you're breeding some really amazing bearded dragons. This is a Hypotrans Wiblets. But normally I have them more red toned and yellows. I have them all different colors. That is a really good looking dragon though. But I usually have them like deep red. And people say you can't really progress the wiblets. And I figure a way to progress them further than what people thought they could have. Is that right? Yes. I, I'm, I could say that I'm confident in our wiblets. I'm not trying to sound biased, but our wiblets be coming out crazy, insane, saturated colors. These are not my best ones, but we had some crazy looking ones. Well, that is a good looking one, and if that's not your best one, I can't wait to see your best one. Here's a uh, Hypo Wiblets Leatherback Het Trans. This is pretty much like what the basic standard color would look like, but it's still beautiful. You can handle them. We always take at least hours through the whole day handling. This is what I do all day, all long. Just play with my animals. This is what I do for my profession, and I just love what I do. How popular are bearded dragons in Europe? Are they as popular as they are in North America? Oh, definitely. Everybody is trying to get in the game. All right, so next time I'm in Europe, I'm coming over. We're doing a whole episode together. You've got a YouTube channel. Thank I will you. put that link in the description below if you want to see more of Derek's amazing bearded dragons. Go to his YouTube channel. I appreciate you, Dave. All right, good Thank talking you. to you, my man. Saving the best for last, I want to introduce you guys to a friend of mine who is one of the biggest ball python breeders in Belgium. Jean-Francois Salins is not only a really good friend of mine, we have had an incredible time so far together in Europe. There are so many videos coming up on both of my channels and Jean-Francois is to thank for all of that. He has been a wonderful tour guide. So this is Jean-Francois Salins. You are the reason I am actually here. Well, at this expo, it's not like you're my father. Oh yeah. I think. Yeah, I'll be. Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> uh, no, you told me about this expo. You had me over. We've just spent 10 days in Europe together, and I have had the best trip ever, thanks to you. Ah, you're I, welcome, my friend. Yeah, and those videos you can see all over both of my channels. But right now, 
I want to see some of your ball pythons that you have. You have some incredible ball pythons at adoptaball.com. Uh, this one caught my eye right here, the Leper Lesser Highway. So this is a Leopard Lesser Highway. Is 66% had pie too, but we need to uh, bread him to be sure. Right, but look at that. So Highway is one of the most incredible genes in ball pythons anyway. But then when you add Leopard and Lesser to it, look what happens. That is incredible. And you just have these cream colors, these lemon yellow colors. That is an amazing snake. What is this, about uh, a little over a year? Yeah, it's a year. Yep. So we have a GHI Ultramel and a Super GHI Ultramel here. But look at that. It's a bit shy, but... Yeah, he's a ball python. Yeah. But this is the GHI Ultramel. This is the Super GHI Ultramel. Look what happens when you get that Super into this combo. That is amazing. You know, I think that everybody should have Pied in their collection. Everybody yeah. should have Clown in their collection. And everybody should have GHI in their yeah, collection. Yeah, and Ultramel probably too. Yeah. And Ultramel, uh, yeah. The, the combos that we can make off of those genes, look at that. This is just an amazingly beautiful combo. Wow. All right, so leaving this rack, we're going to go down to this rack over here. We've got a lot of VPI Azanthic piebalds, which are one of my favorite combos. But over here, we have a Hurricane Pastel Mojave. And on top of that, she is 100% Het Clown. 100% Het Clown. That is a really good looking combo. And it, you know, we all know what a Pastel Mojave is, or a Pastavi, but when you add that hurricane gene, look at what happens to that snake. Now, you also have your own Coco company here. Yep. Tell us a little bit about Go For Coco. Okay, so we started with Go For Coco because we are not completely satisfied but, but what we found on market. Because basically, I have no time to spend like 40 minutes to break a, a block apart. Sure. So I try to, uh, yeah, to make the best uh, of the two worlds, I would say. Something that maintains the humidity level, something that is breakable, totally dry, something that is dust free, and something that you can adjust the level of water you need depending of your uh, species, of course, b depending of your humidity level in your snack room, but also your ar aeration, sure. also the heating system that you use. And we end up with a, a, re a really qualitative product I can show you. Yes. And what is also great is that it's available in two sizes. So basically you have the bigger chunk, who is uh, between 14 and 22 millimeters. Okay, so this is the bigger chunk? Yeah. Okay. And you can uh, see how it looks in my hands. That's some big chunk. And, we and then we got the smaller chunk over yeah. here and that's the black label. Yeah, that's the one, the size 8 to 70, uh, uh, sorry, 17 millimeter, which is the same quality, the same, uh, everything, same feature, but just the difference is the size of the, of the chunk. And it's uh, available in the US and in Canada. We have distributor there. Uh, and pr uh, mainly it's, it's Billy DeRose that uh, take care of that okay. for us. And uh, I take care of the, all the European uh, and UK stuff. So gotcha. it's available everywhere. All right. Well, again, thank you for an awesome week here. Uh, it was really a pleasure to have you with us, with Charlotte and me. And uh, hopefully you come back. Very, I will be back soon. as soon as possible. Yeah, maybe in the summer. I would hope. <laughs> yeah, because this weather was kind of shitty. All right, so if you are interested in Go For Coco, you can go to goforcoco.com and get Go For Coco in your area. You know, I gotta say, I love traveling the world and coming to expos in here in Europe, Australia, all over the world, because you get to see things that are a little bit different than what we may be used to in North America. And this expo, albeit just the second expo that the... That, that, and this is only the second time this expo has been put on, and I am so glad that I got here tonight, Megan in the Netherlands, to see this expo for myself. So, anyway guys, there are a lot more videos coming up from here in Europe, so hit that subscribe button. When you do hit that bell so you never miss an upload, give this video a like, and not only leave me a comment below, let me know what your favorite thing that you saw at this amazing expo was. And until the next reptile adventure, love the planet, feed your reptile obsession, and rattle on.